Hello, we're back with another Ask Mr. Regular. Um, that's the Mr. Regular. Hello. And I'm the Roman. Uh, yeah, I wanted to switch it up because I'm always like, I'm the Roman and that's Mr. Regular as like an right. afterthought and that's not really how it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, if you want to submit questions, go to our subreddit. It's r slash regular car reviews. There's a thread there solely for submissions for Ask Mr. Regular. And so we're going to get right to it. Um, can uh, well this one is it's a bit of a long one but you know uh can you truly call yourself a car guy if you don't actually work on cars and or take them to the track day bro i love cars i love reading about them car show in town i'll be there i love driving them but i don't have any experience beyond basic maintenance and driving to work so can i call myself a car guy can you be part of the autobahn society and not have a bird in a cage at home (laughs) yes that's my dad the yeah, you're allowed to like things even if you don't have one. People are movie buffs. They don't make movies, right? Yeah. You you can you can like comic books. You don't have to draw one, although most of us did or at least tried to on Line Station. Yeah. yeah, you're fine. You're allowed to like things even if you don't have that thing. Yeah, or even if you're not specialized in that thing. Right. You know, you don't have to... You can enjoy a piece of literature without necessarily being able to intellectually break down why that piece of literature is brilliant or something. Right. You know, you can just enjoy it as a work on Mm -hmm. its own merits without having to intellectualize anything. Right. And just, just like with any sort of... I hate to use the term highbrow... But people tend to look at literature and talk about it in exclusionary ways and using big, juicy language because people like to talk in code words no matter what they're doing. And the same is true with car culture. Uh, That's why the cool way to refer to cars is by their chassis designation and not what the car is, you know. E thirty six, E ninety two, A W eleven, E J twenty. It's our version of the secret handshake. Mm-hmm. But you're fine. Yeah, absolutely. you're fine. Absolutely, I, and there's no reason that anyone should act exclusionary towards anyone else within the community, other than that people are trying to sort of measure dick size or not measure but like (laughs) compare you know you get this little circle jerk and uh you end up with this situation where there are different levels of car guy but just not being able to sort of repair your own car or any of that thing it shouldn't preclude you from being able to have an affinity for cars and to appreciate them on both an aesthetic and a deeper Uh, level next question yeah (laughs) let's see what are your thoughts on self-driving cars and how this will affect car culture it won't affect it at all people suck at driving and the computer can do it better i forget who said it it was either farah or alex roy or is it zach clapman or or chris hayes who said Self-driving cars don't have to be better. Self-driving cars don't have to be the best drivers. They just have to be better than bad drivers. Hmm. In that they have to they only have to make less mistakes than a mediocre driver. Because ask a cop, ask a paramedic. Uh Ask anybody who works for insurance, how good is a human in navigating traffic laws? How good is your average driver? I am an average driver. I'm not a good driver. Um, as such, I, I know I'm smart enough. I'm good enough to know to not drive beyond my limits. Um, and I've had some mistakes on the road because of hubris how many people don't know to not drive beyond their limits 
Well, there's plenty of YouTube clips out there of bonehead drivers. Mm. There was even that guy recently in a Tesla who thought that the Tesla could navigate a construction zone where there's where the where because of the jersey barriers that are going up it's switching lanes like now you're here you know and then they move over there so yeah. you're no longer paying attention to the lines on the road yeah. like on 422 all yeah, the time when yeah we're, yeah coming when they get caught in that shoot there's no lines on the road the 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 software can't understand and you see this tesla just go bam right in like it keeps going straight even though the jersey barriers are moving off to the side and goes <laughs> right up on the side I'm like i thought it was supposed to be. and yeah, because then it's sort of funneling you in in a certain way yeah and you're not supposed to or the technology isn't there to navigate that type yeah. of you know it's not made for doing the but it fucking- soon will and it will save a few people yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the grand scheme of things, a handful of accidents that the autonomous driving has had versus, you know, what human error can cause. You know, the yeah. computer isn't going to fuck around with the radio. No, you know, computer or, error. Computers aren't texting. Computers aren't driving well. I'm kind of sleepy. Yeah. Computers are. Computers never go. I'm good to drive. I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. we well, got to get your car haul. Or, yeah. You know, but, or computer isn't eating, you know, that, yeah. that type of thing. And, you know. Computer, com- computer isn't swatting kids in the back seat. And they're also not, you know, freaking out of the, oh, my God, do, could, do I go in here? You know, the, yeah. when when they're merging and they don't know whether to actually, like, hammer it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, which almost got into an accident yesterday because a guy was just slowly, like. and uh, He wasn't committing to He wasn't merge. committing. And I've been guilty of that before, too. But like, there comes a point in time where you either got to piss or get off the pot, which I don't think that's actually the turn of phrase. But either way, it's you can't be in you can't be between state lines with one foot here and one foot here you gotta go you gotta make up your mind yeah and that's what driving is making up your mind and Mm -hmm. committing to decisions and Mm -hmm. not making the wrong ones or making the best decisions that you can within your power so i kind i kind of would trust a computer to kind of do it better than a lot of people i know Mm -hmm. which i don't know if that reflects on me and the people i know but still it's a thing where i don't think self-driving cars and autonomous cars are necessarily that bad and i also don't think that it's going to be that big bigger reflection on car culture because you know in the in the same way that i don't think print books will ever truly go away i don't think that you know manuals right and, like actual driving people who want to enjoy the experience of being in control of a two-ton killing machine going 65 miles an hour they will still want the fun cars and then there are all kinds of people who don't like driving who don't care like just today well i need a new car and and my question was uh uh well what what do you need the car to do and the second i heard the answer oh just drive and not brake (laughs) <laughs> and exactly what did i say today toyota corolla yeah and the person did exactly what i thought of it like, yeah but i don't <laughs> but you didn't like any I, it was kind of this sam i am thing of mm-hmm. you know i don't like this i don't like that and ni- nice girl great girl. Ni- nice girl. um yeah, yeah wonderful yeah. um yeah. but it's one of those things where okay i don't like fords i don't like dodge i don't like chevy i don't like toyota mm-hmm. all right so you know it's like playing guess who and you're figuring out okay well what does this you know uh, you what like do you sedans, not hate you like front wheel drive you like we, we, we were down she did say she liked subaru so okay lots of choose from the subaru but she yeah. didn't like station wagons she didn't like the bug eyes um well moving on For both of us, uh, how do you personally handle criticism to your work? Obviously, your videos aren't for everyone, but when you read comments on your videos, do you take ideas away on what people might like or say, screw y'all, we're going to do it how we please? Wow. It's one of these questions where it's uh, one extreme or the other. I get get the... What's up with getting questions where I have to choose between two answers? Mm. I'm not complaining. I'm just... I do it too. Yeah. Would you rather A or B? Yeah. Um, like I answer these questions on OK Cupid, and I hate like do you would you rather blah 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 or blah blah blah. Yeah. And I always answer well I'll do blah, but on these sorts I always fill in the 
the ex- explain your answer and I, I and I explain myself back to the middle. I always do the the how important is this question and you know it could be whatever answer so it's essentially marking the answer as irrelevant so yeah. it doesn't count towards anything so why mm. did I answer it at all? Yeah. Because it's like, you know, I don't smoke but uh do I care if the other person does? Like no, but mm. Would I prefer, you know, having someone who doesn't smell like an ashtray all the time? Well, actually, no. Judging by the people I've dated before, eh, never mind. But yeah, you ever get caught behind someone at the in in the supermarket or even smaller market, and they leave a wake of nicotine behind them? Yeah, it's it's like they're gone, but you can still smell like man, this guy smokes a lot. Yeah. Um, but your question: What do I think about YouTube comments? I look at the comments in, in other people's videos, and we're doing fine. Yeah. It's relatively nice. I think because we're so irreverent, it uh, creates a back door. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I what I generally find is that the comments were far worse before anyone knew who we were, like before they knew. I feel like there's sort of been this drop of a veil with us, mm-hmm. which, you know, for better or worse, you can make the argument, you know, either way of people who would still rather not know anything about us, which when we set out to do things, that was always the idea because it would end up becoming more about us than about the channel. That's why we keep these things separate from the actual reviews because the reviews are still going to be about the cars and about the people rather than anything to do with us. There are just mm-hmm. these side things that we do, you know, yeah, um, and that's for our own sanity, you mm-hmm. know, but I, it was generally the comments were harsher when there was si- sort of this otherness, this non, p- this lack of personification to sort of who we were. We were just mm-hmm. nameless, faceless dudes out there. I remember when the Fiero video got posted and I was yeah. like super, you know, pumped about it going up because I thought people were going to be really into it. And in, intellectually, I kind of thought, well, this might not work because people don't really know me and they're not really going to, they're going to want Miss Regular's voice. So, um, but I still had this idea that, you know, maybe they, it would go over well and it really didn't go over well. It at didn't all. go over it well did at all. It did not go over well at all. And but now I got, people like the Fiero video. It turned into the Pinkerton album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh my gosh. Like people found out my email and were sending me shit. It was really, yeah, it was re- Well, I mean, I only got like two or three, but oh. still, it wasn't like some big in- influx, but it was really bad times. And it was one of those things where like you go online and you try to figure out, um, because there's no one you can really talk to and be like, how do you deal with or I that, Im- that, impl- or that I implies that the YouTube comments are a problem and they're not. They're not. And once and now I kind of laugh at that type of thing of, you know, for a long time, I would get comments to the effect of uh, just a more crude way of saying, like, you're my least favorite part of this before they knew that, like, I was writing half the thing. Right. Um, that they thought I just did the music. Yeah. You know, and getting these really awful things. And now the majority of it is super positive and really nice to the point where. You know, I'm doing music videos, like I'm making an album. I that was inconceivable to me yeah. when they started. The idea that anyone would want it, you know, yeah. people saying like yes, you know, make the thing. Yeah. Um it's just and the idea that like my nephew or anyone in my family would be in one of those music videos. Yeah. Because in the old days I would have been terrified that they would have gotten got it as bad as I did. Mm-hmm. But everyone has been wonderful in mm-hmm. the comment and I genuinely feel like we have fans who they might disagree with us, but they come at it in a direction. The only people who are like, talk more about the car or all this other stuff are people who are new to the channel and don't really right. know that that's our shtick. Why don't you talk more about the car? Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of your favorite YouTube channels? I like Techmoan. I watch every single video that comes out and I look forward to them. I what have been watching lately? I've been watching I'd have to get my phone and go down who am I watching. Um I'll watch the one takes on Smoking Tire, not every single one of them cuz Fair and the crew are so prolific. Yeah. I think they're doing like 4 a week. Uh I'll watch a few of them. I'm still amazed that Matt can talk throughout an entire drive, nonstop 
coherent narrative while driving someone else's car for the first time. Yes, yeah, like he's try to do that with your own car and don't stop talking. Yeah. Y- you'll be falling back on your ums and ers and kinas and sortas, and it won't work. Yeah, when I was recording the history video over the, cause for the little documentary thing that I'm doing on Dime with Chrysler, the next one of those things, I came over here to use his sound system because he has a better sound system. And I was reading right off of my own stuff and I was still making, you know, cock ups mm-hmm. left and right. And just to hear Fair to have this stream of consciousness that comes out so clearly and crisply. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm jealous of his ability to. You know who I miss? This is like. Do we we want to call it classic YouTube? There was this one channel I used to watch religiously. It was little cartoons. It was called Knock Force. Going, this is going way back to the twenty, the twenty tens. Or yeah, do we call it the twenty tens? Because we're in the twenty teens now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the two thousands. There you the go. 2000s, the two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. They- Knock Force. That's when people did stuff. That was when people were legit. They didn't do it for money. <laughs> Uh, every once in a great moon, every once in a great moon, a new team four star, uh, uh, DBZ abridged comes out. That's all. That's good times. Um, I watch, what is it? AVE, uh, the guy who takes apart and knows a lot about engineering. Yeah. Uh, he did one where it was, where he did a car review. He was in Ireland. I forget what he did. Did he do a Skoda or something and talking about, I mean, I find it amazing how he can know what type of plastic something is by feeling it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to send him uh, like an old MSD ignition box. Like, tell me how the frick this thing works. Yeah. Because we have an old MSD ignition box, an old MSD distributor that was going to go into the uh, uh, Falcon that we didn't use. I have no idea in what part of Canada he lives. Yeah. Um, to send this old uh, junky piece of metal, what would that be like fifty bucks to mail that thing up there, just in postage? I don't know. Yeah. So there you go. Some right. YouTube channels I like are cool. And I, I, I'm another thing of I, I would have to really f- uh, go back through and look at it. I like H three H three. Um, I uh, Nerd Writer one, good stuff. Um. Oh, I'm bracking my brain, but it, maybe one of the, I'll answer this like actually on the subreddit because I really can't think of anything right now. My brain is just shot. Anyway, next question. Has there been any car that you wanted to redo the review of, or has there been any car you would like to re-review? Well, we did one already. We did the S2000 twice. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because the first one was just the spoiled kid version of well, that was before you came on. Yeah, that was when I when I was doing the solo, and so we redid it a second time. Yeah, uh, I think in South Bend. Yeah, it was in South South Bend, Bend Indiana. And uh, hmm, well, Civics go through many generations, so you do multiple ones of them. Any ones I don't think I did a particularly good. Well, I mean, we could do the Fiero again. Yeah, I, I mean, from a non-noir standpoint, because I did take a test drive of a much better one mm. and liked it a lot more. Yeah. Um, but that was just POV drive. You know, you know, stuff I did in the in the early days that I could revisit. I won another Dodge Caravan. You know, now that my dad got rid of that one, and even first and second gen caravans are kind of rare. Although there is differences between, I would like to get my hands on a first gen caravan. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are your top three favorite albums? Or I guess name three of your <laughs> favorite albums. High fidelity questions. Yeah. What is your top five? I'll answer that. But remember one time we were in Hooters? <laughs> and and we had uh, we were going back and forth okay top 10 top 10 worst songs for a wet t-shirt contest do you remember that <laughs> they, was, was this the time where i was like dating the one waitress yes oh bloody hell um <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I dated a hooters girl and it was very strange um this was like when i had just come on rcr at around the time of the avenger review was that the same time i got into the wing contest and i was wearing a shirt and tie and a vest yes was that the same night that might have been, been the, the same, same night. night oh that's hilarious 
Yeah, so this would have been pre R oh, before I came on. That um, was pre RCR. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh God, I completely forgot that you can be okay. So, uh, Mr. Regular competed in this wing contest, and he was dressed so so business like. I that was in the whole thing where I was wearing like it was sort of still late ska stage. So I had this rude boy outfit, and I would wear I would just go around wearing shirts and ties and vests and dumbass hats <laughs> like friggin angus from uh 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 lost in the woods oh. uh i was that guy <laughs> um so i'm in this wing contest at the hooters and everybody else is just dressed like guys do when they go to hooters like yeah you know shirts with clever sayings on it and i'm there in a a tweed waistcoat um cream white uh dress shirt buttoned up to the top and like a checkered tie yeah and then i have my sleeves rolled up and i was getting cheered on like suit guy suit guy (laughs) i didn't win because we had freaking deep throat through three stations down from me who who was just taking the wings and doing yeah, strip, stripping, stripping yeah. them and just strip and swallow because they were so greased up i didn't i didn't win yeah. and then i felt awful after that but anyway what was it top five worst songs for wet t-shirt contents uh i remember the some of the list it was fire and rain by james taylor <laughs> in the ghetto by elvis presley oh, what else uh, did we do, um, was Sound of Silence on there? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, uh, Losing My Religion by R.E.M. <laughs> That's four. Cats in the Cradle. Maybe. Cats in the Cradle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, top five worst sorry. songs for a wet t-shirt contest. But, so my top five albums. Don't make me choose. Well, he always moves three. Around. Top three albums. Yeah. All right, let's go obscure here. Run Run Rudy by uh, uh, Baby Love and the Van Dangos. Mmm. Uh, uh, classic 90s stunt by Bare Naked Ladies. Mm. Mm. Whole album is listening to. Yeah. And they get the pop song out of the way first. <laughs> but it's still good because still, you, yeah. still one week, it's been. Yeah. And I save that album. I still have that album, still keep it in my car. And I don't play it until it's summer. Like, it's summer now, it's been. Yeah. <laughs> and I play that thing loud. Something about call and answer when you just yeah. you roll the windows down and you, it's night. It's night and yeah. Oh. You call, I will answer, and if you fall, I'll pick you up. And if you court this disaster, I'll point you home. And I promise you, you, I'll never do those this crazy, crazy messed up things that you do because I, f- yeah, I if you I, ever do i promise you i'll be, be the worst to crucify you mm-hmm. ah, yeah. summer get here <laughs> yeah come on uh, uh, uh third album um i'm not gonna go dark side i'm not gonna go dark side even though it's you know classically almost yeah. perfect Uh, eh, yeah. Uh, roll with the. Uh, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Uh, Ario Speedwagon. Oh, very nice. Great driving album. And mine, I are are pretty quick. And well, I don't know what the third one, but uh, Where Have All the Merrymakers Gone by Harvey Danger, mm. criminally underrated. One of my favorite albums ever. Uh, well, obviously because I just listed it. Uh, The Color and the Shape, Foo Fighters. Mm. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe, like, hmm. I don't know. They, 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 those two are good enough for me, just in terms of uh, just great songs where every song is just like I probably I probably throw Stun on there too, just yeah. because it's a great. Every uh, one of those songs could have been a single. Uh, cra- who who wrote "Bringing Down the Horse"? Look it up. Yeah. Well, where did my phone go? This is exciting stuff. Where did- Turn well, into oh. the Joe. Ra- Jamie, look that up. <laughs> Turning in the Joe Rogan podcast for a second. Well, I mean, I'll let it around. Br- it. Bringing down the horse. Who wrote 
People are shouting it. Bringing now. down the horse. Bringing down the horse. Like another 90s album. According to Wikipedia, Bringing Down the Horse is the second album by the American rock band, The Wallflowers. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Wallflowers. Put on your mask, my Rosalita. Uh, next question. All right. And this will be the last one. Okay. What piece of literature was most impactful on your life? Sister Carrie. Theodore Dreiser. I mean, we talked about it before. It's impactful enough that I wrote my master's thesis on it. So this is a great segue uh, because. And it's right the, over there. The, the book is still over there. I mean, what, you say you read that like every two years anyway. So. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's this summer is actually coming up on. You got to read it again because you find um, something new. It's a long, long book. It's a very long read. Uh, but each, and, and American Tragedy, Dreiser's American Tragedy is almost twice as long. Yeah. It's a huge novel. But what's good about rereading it is that you keep coming back to it at different points of your life. Like grad school, Roman, yeah. reading that uh, is different than, you know, he j just turned 30, Roman, yeah. reading it. And it's weird. Yeah. You know, but... Um, like modernist, modernist novels are the, like, 19th century version of... Uh, long Netflix series that you binge watch. Yeah. They're long, long, long. Oh, you got to wait till this. You got to get through the first season, get to the second season. Yeah. It's like these novels, like nothing's happening. It's been a hundred pages. Keep at it. Yeah. That's yeah. what Henry James is like, Ugh. but it's always worth it for yeah. me. Um, but yeah, the segue was into what was your master's thesis about and would you do grad school again? Hmm. See, grad school led to RCR. Yeah. That's I, the thing. I always could I do RCR with my twenty with my twenty four year old brain coming out of undergrad. I don't think I could. Yeah, because there was a certain amount of literary um uh capital that we mm -hmm. needed to yeah. receive. And does that mean you need grad school to be able to do what we do? No. Absolutely you don't even not. need an undergrad to do what we do. Uh, in a very dropkick Murphy sort of way, you need staunch determination and ferocious iron will yeah. uh, to do anything, anything creative. Uh, and uh, as Hemingway said, the first draft of anything is shit. So don't be afraid. Just keep friggin' at it. Um, yeah, the first draft of every... Oh, God, the stuff I wrote in undergrad. Yeah. Oh, it was God. Just and the first draft of every RCR thing, I write it knowing that it's going to be bad, and the first draft is always bad. Um, well, for me, anyway. Because right. I, I just... When I put it all together, there will be good lines that I know, but I don't yeah. I don't know where they go, right. and it's all that other stuff. But you have to allow yourself to... you got to say that it's okay for it to right. suck you, like, on the first try. Right. Let me show you how I'm doing a, a longer thing. Because Roman's doing his uh, sort of history stuff. Uh, and I'm starting to write a very long, the very first video game review, although it's going to be literature based. I am doing a very, very long, uh, close reading and literary analysis of Lost in the Woods. Lost in the Woods. Night in the Woods? Night in the Woods. Uh, 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 Rust Belt Gothic and Night in the Woods, uh, I'm even going to give it a stupid, stuffy academic title, like <laughs> Rust Belt Gothic and Night in the Woods, an analysis of 21st century media, you know, like that. You got to have a, if you have an academic paper, the, Rust the, Belt Esoterica. it has to be a run on sentence. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I use two, uh, two pads. One is the crap pad, and the one is the consolidated pad. So I just start writing stuff here on one, and as I'm getting my thoughts together here, I write it a second time over here. Can you use Microsoft Word? Of course you can. <laughs> I just do it longhand. Yeah. Because I can see earlier me and now me here. So... As this fills up, it gets consolidated, and I write it out again, because for me, for you, it'll be different. I will, as I figure out what I'm writing as I'm writing it. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm thinking until I write it down. And then, like, okay, this is what I was thinking about. And as I reread it another time, I'm, like, putting carrots and arrows and all those proofreading symbols that you forgot about. 
and it goes in here and I'm writing in the margins as well, like more thoughts. And then this will get over here and it'll, it'll get better. Yeah. I don't always do this for RCR. Um, but my RCR things is still one, but there's notes in it, but there still is. And I use like my band stuff. Sometimes I will put Coda and DS Alcoda down at, down at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> like repeat this. Well, anyway, well, I mean, and part of it is also, um, I use my voice recorder function on my phone. Anytime an idea hits me and I don't have a, uh, 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 notebook or mm-hmm. a notepad on me but for the most part i always have a little notebook or something of the kind traveling with me just because that's when a lot of uh say i'm out like having a few beers or if i'm doing an open mic or if i'm just hanging out with friends like at a cafe or something and then you know something poignant will hit like half the half the endings that all right you know about like in the accord thing about you know how um damaged things still have value yeah like i was just hanging out with a friend and i was it just came to me for some reason i have no idea what the context was but um i'm like shit i gotta write that down you know like i said it to him about something of oh well don't throw that out damaged things still have value i'm like ah shit and then from there you reverse engineer the rest of the ending leading up to it of sort of you know adopting a sick dog or a sick child or you know all these other things that are part of a broader statement that might be poignant and that might reach Mm -hmm. somebody And, and which is funny because when I started out doing this, like the idea wasn't to sort of make people become introspective, Mm -hmm. but I realized that that kind of has the same value. And I mean, you do it too of making them think as much as making them laugh, Mm -hmm. which it's, that's also a hard thing to do is finding the balance because comedy is hard. You know, if it were, if I, if I had to write fiction, like dramatic fiction, I almost feel like I could maybe do it easier than this. It's just, I don't know how to be, you're you don't have being, to be on with your words all the time yeah of just because comedy is so subjective that i find myself writing and rewriting every joke in my head because yeah. i'm not sure that anyone's going to have the same sense of humor that i do right. which is part of why we became friends in grad school because it's like hey we have the same sense of humor like uh-huh. why is this you know um yeah. and and i still say and, and this is because the original question, like, what did you do your master's thesis on and would you do grad school again? I would do grad school again for this guy just because <laughs> I, I – no lie, I find this more valuable than the degree I got. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the friend attached to this one. Well, I mean, yeah. But I mean, like, the friendship too. Like, it means a lot. And – well, yeah, I know. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But uh, my master's thesis was on American exceptionalism in the works of Nathaniel Hawthorne. Mm-hmm. So it was this comparison of how the Scarlet Letter – takes uh american exceptionalism and sort of creates the country as this beacon on a hill um, oh yeah seeing it as this ideal to strive towards Mm -hmm. um but in a puritanical sense that almost sort of demonizes uh what they're trying to illuminate it it was very this weird esoteric paper that was so far up its own ass (laughs) but i because the more I think about it and the more I think back on that paper... Was Vogel on your panel? No. He was on my... Well, he was my convener. Oh, and my And he God. says to me, you had a few spelling errors in this. <laughs> and I'm like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, in my final draft, I'm like, there's, a, there's some uh, grammatical and spelling hiccups you got going on in here. <laughs> and I'm like, I had a bunch of other classmates like proofread that for me yeah. not not to pass the buck it's still my responsibility I, but man me and spelling errors i'll tell you what you guys know all about that yeah and, and travis happens. olkolsky knows all about my spelling errors yeah as we stop talking to you and stop talking about pro- <laughs> english professors at kutztown that you never heard of and don't know the subtext to yeah it, i mean it's this is just like, all the people that i learned rhetoric and composition from which mm-hmm. i really didn't like learning about back then yeah. and, but now i use it all the time right of it's the equivalent of when you're a kid and you're saying well when am i ever going to use algebra in real life but you don't know what your life is going to be yeah. Yeah. You know, and so when am I ever going to use rhetoric and composition? If you'd have told me then, you know, well, you'll need it for YouTube. And 
I would think that was literally the dumbest thing you could have possibly <laughs> said to me at the time. Like, why the shit would I be doing anything with rhetoric and composition on YouTube? Yeah. But uh, still, you know, you never know where your life is going to take you. So when right. people try to teach you things, let them teach you. Because, That's a good line. Yeah. <laughs> it, you have to allow yourself to be taught. When the mechanic tells you what's wrong, don't get all uppity with them. Yeah. Man. But uh, your Sister Carrie thesis, what was it actually about specifically? Like Sister Carrie? The title was uh, contrasting, binar- contrasting Binaries in Theodore Dreiser's Sister Carrie. And the, the, the subtitle should have been Dreiser on Dreiser. Mm. Um, what I did was I took all of his uh, scraps. Th- there was the, uh, the Dreiser Foundation found all of his notes mm. like his notebooks and stuff and they published it and it was just called Dreiser on Life and Kutztown has a copy mm. um, in fact there was a pretty good Dreiser collection at uh, in Rohrbach Library mm. so what I was doing was explaining Dreiser to himself mm. uh, because I'm just explaining how he thought and how he was a a reflection of the emerging uh i didn't use the term jingoistic but the new nationalism of the 1900s Mm. where america was searching for an identity um to put in car terms with you that was the time where we didn't know if it was going to be steam electric or petroleum powering our vehicles just the same ways and we, we didn't really know what to think of ourselves this is, you know pre-war war pre-war war one uh spanish american war I don't know, when was that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i'd have to go back and reread that paper yeah memories memories oh duh and also um Grand Illusion was worked in there as well. Oh, very nice. Grand Illusion, uh, Grand Illusion, and was it just Renoir and Grand Illusion? There's something else. Yeah, I have that paper somewhere. I'll bet it's on my old one gig jump drive. Still, a version of that. Yeah, I think that's where mine is too. Yeah. I have a one gig on there, but uh, yeah, just yep, old grad school. But yep. uh, anyway, that's a wrap for us this week, <laughs> and. Uh, that's Mr. Regular. I'm mm-hmm. the Roman. If you have any questions at all that you want us to answer, mm-hmm. go to the subreddit, r slash regular car reviews. There's a thread there. You can ask whatever, uh, advice, you know, about anything. You can ask car questions, all that great stuff. And, uh, hopefully we'll answer them on the show. Mm-hmm. But until next week, thanks for watching. And, and thank you to everybody who donates through Patreon and buys the merch. Uh, more merch coming. Uh, I don't know. This thing isn't going to go up for a few weeks, so maybe it's already out by the time I say this. But thank you to everybody who watches regular car views and allows us to continue this goofy experience, a goofy experiment. And what on earth is the show about? <laughs> uh, have a great cars week. and toilet humor. Oh, yeah. have a good night. Bye.